Hey, folks. <sighs> Do you ever feel like the magic of life is missing? Like you're moving ahead, but never leaving a mark. Like a pen that's out of ink. <sighs> I feel this way every single day. Yeah. I need help. Alrighty. Oh. Oh. I just want therapy. I just want therapy. I just want therapy! I need to relax. I'm freaking out over here. Oh my god, I just gotta... I gotta chill out. I just gotta calm down. Hey, I know. I'll watch a movie. All right. All right. Oh. I put in the wrong movie. Yeah. Okay, anybody could have made that mistake. What a movie. <gasps> what the hell is going on? I ran through every reasonable explanation my brain could conjure up. Is there a carbon monoxide leak in my house? It does kind of smell like gas in here. Ah, uh, no, that's just my gasoline-flavored scented candle. Was this my long-lost brother who just decided to pop in and say hi? No, can't be. My 23andMe didn't show a single ghost in my family lineage. <gasps> a ghost. A cold chill ran up my spine, as if my spine wasn't made of bones, but was instead made of ice. The mirror. I must have summoned some kind of ghost therapist. Makes sense. After all, there's nothing scarier than the pain we carry inside. I suppose he's gonna try to make me think I'm depressed and insecure or something. <laughs> Jokes on you, silly specter! I already know I'm depressed and insecure, and I know exactly why. <laughs> Do your worst, you ethereal bastard! I'll play along, but in a game of deduction, I always come out on top. Or at least as a power bottom. <laughs> Let the game of wits begin! Yes. What a movie indeed. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't have guessed you were a horror movie person. You seem like such a wimp. Kind of a pussy. If you don't mind me asking, what got you into horror films? Well, I'm chewing. Well, I guess it all started when I was a kid. Growing up, my parents didn't really seem to care a whole lot about the media I consumed. They always watched the most violent and fucked up movies and watched the raunchiest comedies, all without much regard for how my child brain would react to being submerged in a sea of fucking and murder. Oh, that was quick. Quicker than expected. What? Your diagnosis. Them's the beans. Look, maybe I am quirky. Who really gives a shit? The way I see it, you may as well expose your kids to that stuff yourself. At least if you're supervising, you can make sure they're watching movie gore as opposed to like a, I don't know, one man, one jar or something. If everyone else became quirky, you wouldn't be unique anymore. And this would likely destroy what little self-esteem you have left. I mean, you could attempt to artificially change your personality, preserve your fragile sense of identity, it's always an option. God damn, okay, I can see why you're the free alternative to therapy. <laughs> I'm not free. Dude. I'm broke as shit. That, that's fine. I do not charge money. <laughs> oh, okay. That's not suspicious at all. <laughs> no and you know it's not, and that's the great thing. Yeah. 
The only thing I feel I missed out on as a result of being allowed to play or watch whatever mature rated stuff I wanted was the experience of seeing my first Mortal Kombat fatality or my first R rated movie after years of exclusively consuming Dove family approved content. The way people describe that experience, it sounds magical. Of course, those things were still novel to me even at the young age I saw them, but I can only imagine how much my mind would have imploded if the first time I saw saw no that's not right the first time i seen saw fuck that was terrible was at my friend's house as an 11 year old instead of while playing mario kart ds on my living room floor with my parents as a seven year old but hey the grass is always greener on the other side uh, absolutely i would love to be mortal again <laughs> do you want to swap swap you mean like kill me and steal my body <laughs> oh, i don't know another way no i i don't even understand why you would ask me something like that sorry what what do you even do with my body? Uh, I don't know. Probably bitch a lot less, first of all. You might assume that this means I'm fearless, that no media scared me whatsoever, and that I grew up to be the ultimate badass. Well, no. It just means that the media that did scare me is significantly dumber. Oh, come on now. You don't have to use self-deprecating language. I'm sure whatever it is that scared you wasn't that dumb. Don't give me that, oh, don't use self-deprecating language shit. You just called me a bitch. Oh, movie's over. Movie's over? Movie's over? Movie's over. What do you mean the movie's over? Where's the remote? The movie's it's over. Not that big a deal. Just go back to the menu. You fool. That's what I'm trying to avoid. Don't you understand? I'm, I'm scared of the DVD menu. Oh, it's okay. How about this? We can just turn it off. You don't have to worry about it. Okay. Sorry. No, no, it's, it's quite all right. So, um, how long have you been scared of the DVD menu? <sighs> Still a bitch, by the way. When we were kids, me and my brother shared a room, and we would usually put on a movie to fall asleep to. Well, I say that like there was a variety of movies, but it was almost exclusively either Liddy and the Tramp or Alvin and the Chipmunks. You know what? You know what? You know what? We'll save the thing for the movie that Dave says. Okay, together. Three, two, one. Alvin. The only problem with going to sleep to a DVD, though, is that. Inevitably, the movie will end. And what happens after the end, you ask? The DVD menu. Yeah, yes, the, the DVD menu. The same repeating clips of the movie, and the same repeating 30 second snippet of music, and the same few options staring at you, and that's not even the worst part. After the 30 seconds is up, the music fades out, and then just when you've gotten used to the silence, it comes back again. And then the same music, and the same movie clips repeat themselves until, Silence again. And then it's back again. And again. And again. And again. And again. And again. And it keeps going. It just keeps going and it never stops. And every time it gets more and more uncomfortable and I, I can't. I just thought I'm like, hey, 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 it's okay. Don't worry. The TV's off. The DV menu can't hurt you now. Yeah, but it's lurking. Just beneath that black veil, it's lurking. Waiting for the moment to make me mildly uncomfortable. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Okay, let's, let's change the subject. Okay. Let's see. What's something that couldn't possibly be a source of trauma? Let's talk about what we know. Oh, God! For many, it was the beginning of an inflation fetish. For me, well... It was the beginning of an inflation fetish. Hey, stop it! Look, man, I don't know why Weird Al's parody of Michael Jackson's bad called Fat. This is how you win five Grammys, folks. Freak me out so hard. Oh, something about the way he inflates like that. It weirded me out. When it comes to stuff that really left a mark on my psyche, though, the clear, undisputed champion of my childhood trauma is creepypastas. Back when I was first discovering the internet, these weird internet urban legends were scarier than anything I'd ever seen. They really shouldn't have been, but for some reason, they were. I saw The Shining when I was like six, but apparently Sonic.exe is scarier. Stanley Kubrick is over here recording the same take hundreds of times, only to be bested by an 11-year-old with internet access and a Sunday afternoon to waste. Mm, how embarrassing. I think my first exposure to a creepypasta that really got under my skin was Red Mist, otherwise known as Squidward. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, get hurt. Why didn't you just say- No! God doesn't like that word. He doesn't? No. He also doesn't like when I say bad words in my web show. You're terrible at this game. Sorry, 
I guess. I don't know. This stream is so shitty, I'm leaving. After I'm gone, the only person left watching will be God, judging you from heaven. Okay, ain't nothing to judge. Just a kick-ass stream. I don't like that kind of salty language. In retrospect, Red Mist is obvious nonsense, but I think that when it comes to lost episode type creepypastas, it's one of the better ones. The idea of a disgruntled Nickelodeon employee making his own fucked up Spongebob episode is kinda neat. Believe it or not, there have been times where artists on Spongebob projects have done this kind of thing. In the PS1 game Spongebob Super Sponge, a variety of lewd artworks were found in the game's files, hidden in there by devs who were, presumably, less than stoked to be working on a Spongebob tie-in game on a console that was quickly losing relevance. Point is, it's not too far-fetched of an idea. Honestly though, it wasn't the story of Red Mist that kept me up at night. <sighs> it was the photo. Honestly, it still kind of freaks me out. Rationally, I know that this is just a stupid edit of Squidward. I, I could picture some kid opening up his pirated copy of Photoshop and slapping this together in a half hour, but I don't know, man. Maybe it's just residual fear from when I was a kid, but this picture really hits me with a weird feeling of paranoia that I feel in my gut. You know what else you feel in your gut? What? The Tickle Monster! <laughs> <laughs> crazy guy. <laughs> it seems to be a running theme with all these creepypastas. The story themselves are usually mediocre at best, but the pictures that go along with them are spooky. Kinda reminds me of those scary stories to tell in the dark books. These books simultaneously had some of the most ball-shrivelingly freaky illustrations, and some of the lamest stories. Where's my hole? You feel like you're reading a Junji Ito manga with a plot written by R.L. Stein. The famous creepypasta stories, yeah, they're they're almost always shitty. If any of these stories were actually published, they'd be laughed out of any Barnes and Noble. Okay, I know I'm talking big game here, but I was terrified of all of these. Jeff the Killer was so fucking scary to me, dude. And Smile Dog? Oh, I was so scared of Smile Dog that when I would shower, I would put a mirror up against the wall so that I could see the door from inside the shower. I don't know, man. I guess I didn't pay much attention to the story because that's literally not even how Smile Dog works. His whole thing is that he's a picture in a spooky chain email that makes you go cuckoo crazy till you die. Not fucking furry Norman Bates. But when it comes to creepypastas with spooky imagery, there is one that stands tall above the rest. Ben Drowned. This was the ultimate, most traumatic thing I saw online besides one man one jar of my entire childhood. The story itself is, once again, pretty lame. The idea of a spooky ghost haunting a video game cartridge? I'm sorry, it's just not scary, man. I, I don't care if it's a little kid ghost, a sexy gamer GF ghost, or even a scary demon ghost. It's not a scary concept. There's a reason Stephen King has never written a book about a haunted video game cartridge. He did. It came out right now. It's oh. a New York Times bestseller. Oh. And it's being adapted into an original series for HBO. Oh. And it's gonna star Finn Wolfhard as the boy who wants the game cartridge. Oh. Never mind, no. HBO just canceled it for tax money. Damn you, HBO! Alright, that was pretty good. Uh, the HBO drama is probably already losing relevancy by this point, but you know, who cares? Kind of just the way things go nowadays. Yeah, that's true. It's the harsh reality of the news cycle, I guess. Yep. Want a beer? You uh, you got ghost beer? <laughs> no, I got ghost beer. Ah, uh, yeah. Nice. Nothing better with beer than peace. Hey, what the fuck? Where did you get that? Going home.
Honestly though, the story of Ben Drowned is not at all what's iconic about it. The thing that's so iconic about it is the gameplay videos they shared to go along with the story. Of course, in hindsight, this is nothing more than a hacked Majora's Mask ROM specifically designed to be weird and unnerving, but to me at the time, this was all I needed to be totally convinced that this shit 100% actually happened. Is it stupid that I believed without a shadow of a doubt that there existed a haunted cartridge of Majora's Mask that some dude bought at a garage sale? <laughs> yes, but in my defense, and maybe my expectations were a bit low since, you know, it's a fucking haunted video game creepypasta. But I think these Ben Drown videos actually hold up pretty well. The way the lifeless elegy of emptiness statue follows Link as he wanders this completely barren clock town. It's simple, but I think it's pretty effective for what it is. I will say though, Majora's Mask itself being as creepy and off-putting a game as it is, does do a lot of the heavy lifting here. If these same tricks were being pulled in, say, Croc and the Legend of the Gobbos, I don't think it'd work quite as well. It's all just so creative and dare I say, artistic? Hot take? But I think that there's more artistic merit to the Ben Drowned videos than there is to whatever bullshit Andy Warhol was up to. That dickhead just put an Instagram filter on a couple of soup cans and called it a day. These first few Ben Drowned videos actually ended up being the beginning of a sprawling ARG that is... Uh... Did I accidentally click on the Warhammer wiki? I remember me and my friends used to theorize about Ben Drowned back in the day. <laughs> A big point of discussion for us was how prolific gaming YouTuber Peanut Butter Gamer was able to survive being attacked by Ben Drowned during his episode of the G-Files about the topic. It just didn't add up! How would PBG have gotten a hold of the original Ben Drowned copy? Unless Ben Drowned somehow escaped and found a new host? It wouldn't make sense that he would target a big YouTuber. That way he could spook more people than before. Well, no. Years after the fact, Peanut Butter Gamer very nonchalantly slashed all of my childhood wonder by admitting that he just used ROM hacks to recreate Ben Drowned. Ah. So it's all fake then. Okay. From that point on, I never believed in anything ever again. Santa Claus, Jesus, money back guarantees. Age of consent. What? What? Why? Why on earth? Why on earth would that be what I was gonna say next? I was just going off what you said. What I said? Your vibes. Why? Vi what do you? God damn it! That's. So. You blame this peanut butter gamer for your chest issues? I... Yeah, yes, yes, yes. I, that's the first time I ever realized there was no magic in the world. That things like ghouls and goblins and ghosts couldn't possibly ex... I always knew. I always knew I never should have stopped believing. Looks like my work here is done. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Sorry, I uh, forgot something. Oh, that's that's totally fine. What'd you forget? Nothing important. Just your soul. <laughs> Halloween, Halloween, Halloween frights October nights and pumpkin shaped lights All of these sights I see on Halloween It's scary enough to make me scream Halloween, Halloween, Halloween frights Creepy ghoul sneers and stills me with fear Praying 8th graders don't hurt me again Ruin my weekend Leave me alone I'll call my mom's phone And I know what she'll do She'll call my dad He's always so mad To take it out on me and then oh, on you it, Halloween, Halloween, Halloween frights Truly start when I'm home Zombies and ghosts just can't compare to my dad when he's mad. Halloween, Halloween, Halloween frights. Hot to burn nights and pumpkin shaped lights. Halloween. Keep it down! Keep it down! Keep it down! Oh my fucking keep it down! I work all day!